Assalamu alaikum, uh, brothers, for coming. And Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Muhammad, for coming. Even though you're incredibly ill, I appreciate you. You rolling up to give us our weekly, our daily dars. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, no matter how much one is sick, for having such a company, uh, one feels much, much better. Yeah. I feel like I'm alive. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. We've been talking about the, the nishus of, of women. What about the nishus of man? How does a woman deal with that? Just a reminder, a quick reminder about the, the term in the shoes uh, when one of them is steering away. And the word in shoes from Neshaza, which is a high or an upper area of the land, was concerning a woman when she behaves arrogantly uh, towards her husband and son. So we call her Neshaz. And we also said that if, uh, if the mistake or the cause of the problem is from the man, then he's also called Neshaz. And uh, the nushuz is from him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is the one who controls hearts. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say a supplication every morning and every evening, regularly. This supplication really every one of us should adopt and say regularly to. Which is, O oh Allah, the one who changes the hearts, keep my heart firm on your faith. Keep my heart firm on your straight path. Uh, hearts do change uh, and that's why the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, used to supplicate and beg Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to keep him firm. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the best man ever and he was instructing us that we are weak uh, humans who need Allah's assistance to keep our hearts firm and to keep our Iman solid and increase it not decrease it. Similarly in every aspect in life sometimes we're so much into love and in no time, that love can uh, convert into hatred. Hate. You know? Uh, and that's why the Prophet ﷺ in one hadith, he said that when you love, do not uh, love to the extreme. Mm -hmm. You never know. Maybe that one day the opposite will happen. And if you dislike or hate, do not hate to the extreme. You never know. Maybe one day that the person the whom you hate that much is going to be a close friend. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I can't imagine the Prophet ﷺ so seeing the man who killed his uncle, Hamza, we're talking about Wahshay, and accepting the fact that he have, he have accepted Islam, he became a Muslim, he became one of his friends, mm -hmm. and he does not subject him with any harm, he does not take avenge or revenge from this man. So accordingly, if the hearts are in, the, in Allah's hands, uh, for some time I used to wonder, how could a couple who have loved each other so much, so that they were with each other on one bed, they have seen each other in the nude. They have done everything which they cannot do with anybody else. Yeah. Now they're fighting and they're <coughs> asking for divorce and separation. But as we say, uh, this is a concept of the heart, liking and disliking. Mm -hmm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drew a nice plan for a woman if she notices any changes or that her, her husband is steering away from her. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah An-Nisa وَإِنِ امْرَأَةٌ خَافَتْ مِنْ بَعْلِهَا نُشُوزًا أَوْ إِعْرَاضًا فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا أَنْ يُصْلِحَا بَيْنَهُمَا صُلْحَا وَالصُلْحُ خَيْرٌ وَأُحْضِرَتِ الْأَنفُسُ الشُّحْ وَإِن تُحْسِنُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is treating the problem from the roots, not superficially. If a woman notices that her husband is steering away from her, notices that uh, any disturbance in the relationship, any cruelty, uh, or her husband is turning away from her, let her do what? There is no sin upon them to make a term of peace between them. Uh, based on the condition which they both have after finding out what is the cause of the problem. Uh, trying to find out maybe that uh, she's neglecting herself before him. She's ignoring his rights. She's not taking well care of herself. She's not adorning herself. She's not wearing a nice makeup before him. 
uh, she's too busy with the kids after finding out what are the causes from her or maybe he's interested in another woman and that happens a lot right mm -hmm. uh, maybe somebody else uh, uh, is in his life so there has to be a reason after finding out what is the reason a woman will start working accordingly trying to reconciliate to be open with her husband try to uh, uh, ask him in the open what's going on so there were steps for men to follow, like to go from uh, 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 from uh, trying to reconcile to abandon her in bed and beating. So what are the steps that women should follow? Is there a certain That's steps? a very good question. <coughs> because if a woman is not familiar with that, many women make a great mistake by saying when they see their husband uh, steering away from them, so they too steer away. Mm -hmm. And that widens the gap. Uh, that minimizes the hopes of reconciliation. But a smart woman would follow the following steps. Number one, examine the case, as I mentioned earlier. Examine herself first. Have I changed since we got married? Look at the beautiful moments and the good time which we had together. What was I doing to please him? What was I doing perfect that he liked in me? So I try to recall this and maintain it. If I'm perfect and I have not changed and I only notice that the changes happen from him then we'll go to the next step which is al mukashafa to open up and to confront but there is a technique Ismail and there is a, a mechanism for confrontation it is very easy to break but it's impossible to fix uh, not necessarily impossible in some cases. So I would say instead of trying to break, try to fix first. Prevention is better than cure, right? So uh, you can sit in public or in front of his family members, in front of the children, and confront him with his mistakes. You have a change, you do this, you do this, you do that. And accordingly, you will aggravate him. And he might take an action too, either by leaving home or by saying, saying I'm not interested in you in, mm. anymore, and so forth. So that's going to break. Even if we reconciliate, that's going to leave a bitter taste in your life and a bad memory and experience. But choosing the right time to discuss those issues with him. After maybe a nice meal, after uh, going out together, perhaps buying him a gift, you know, because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated generally, tahadu, tahabu. One of the, the, the means of creating love amongst ordinary people is to give gifts. Yeah. What about amongst the, the, the couple? Yeah. You know, the husband yeah. and the wife. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be a very valuable thing, something that you can afford. Show him that you're interested in, in him. Show him that uh, you're on the same commitment, being a good wife and a righteous one to him. By doing this, you're not belittling the value of yourself. You are fulfilling uh, what Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked from you. And you're receiving a reward for that. And you're keeping and maintaining the integrity of your family. What if all of that doesn't work? Then we have to sit and talk. Uh, what have made you change? Did I do anything wrong? I begin with myself. I say that, uh, did I upset you? Did I disobey you? Did I violate any of your rights? <coughs> and so if none of that, then so what's making you change? What's making you away from home? Not paying attention to us, to the family, to the children, and so on. Nicely trying to keep peace. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the same ayah, وَالصُّلْحُ خَيْرٌ As-sulh, making peace, is better. Better than what? Fighting. Make he didn't say. <laughs> but the alternative... Mm -hmm. is Fine. breaking, Fine. divorce, yeah. right? Yeah. So, as khair And the master of ceremony here is going to be the wife, the smart, intelligent wife, who's trying to keep peace and trying to maintain the integrity of her family. After uh, confronting the husband in the most suitable time and verifying what's wrong, we come to the next step, which is reconciliation. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said uh, in one hadith that shall I not tell you about the, your women in paradise? They said, sure, ya Rasulullah. He said about the qualities of your women in paradise that one, whenever her husband gets upset with her, that she puts her hand in his, not from far away. No, she would draw close to him. She would try to approach him nicely and reconciliate and saying that, there is no way that I can sleep while you are still upset with me. Many people think that by doing so, you're belittling your value. You're showing him that you're in need for him. But by doing so, you're capturing his heart. You're enslaving him. You're making him like your young boy, young girl. Why? Because before that, he cannot resist this kind of treatment. You know? So... Uh, you do your best. At least that will show exactly where the mistake is coming from and whose fault is it. What do you think about that, yes, man? I think it's a great plan. It's a divinely inspired plan. So Allah SWT tells you how to reconcile your marriage as a woman and how to reconcile your marriage as a man. You have to follow that more so than following, you know, self-help books and, you know, the local psychiatrist, the wedding counselor, or marriage counselor, or anything like this. Allah is better prepared to know his creation than we are. You know, as you said, that problems <coughs> happens, and they happened in the life of the Prophet sallallahu and with his wives. They happen with, uh, with us in our life too as well. The moment my wife comes to me and says that, I'm sorry, look, I'm sorry. And I realize that she said, I'm sorry, maybe it was my mistake. And I analyze the situation that forces me to, to say, I'm sorry. No, I, I'm, I'm the one who's sorry. <laughs> and right away, we break the ice. And we resolve the problem and without the interference of anybody else. It brings the else. love back also. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. like, like you said before, Sheikh, any, for example, uh, he did something wrong to her, but she comes with khair instead of taking revenge. So he'll be surprised. Oh, I, was, I, d I did something that, that she didn't like, but she came, but she came with, with good. And yeah, it was good, so... The, the Speaking of what, what brings love, the love again. I, yeah. I love full sandwiches, and I happen to have a couple <laughs> full sandwiches. So why not go grab those, and we can we can eat them up, inshallah. and then we can uh, start talking again, inshallah. <laughs>and social political perspective. So sometimes some non-Muslims, they might not understand the full Islamic pictures. Anyone can say anything about it. Yes. So when can we, who speaks for Islam? Mm -hmm. This is the biggest question. <laughs> who speaks for Islam? Mm -hmm. No, they are not sinning. They are not sinning, but we are talking about now the general ruling. Mm -hmm. They are not sinning, but they are going against what has been established it is his own ishtihad at a specific time people would see it as a uh, threat a threat exactly mm -hmm. how do we how do we explain to them it's not really a threat it's, it's actually good for the country as well but if we don't participate how would we ever reach to our rights can you clarify with us what should be the level of political participation of the muslims in the west yeah. oh. I will have to admit here that my wife taught me a very important thing. She did teach me how to say I'm sorry. Mm, By saying whenever there is a problem, sometimes even uh, I know that it's not her fault. So she would come and say, hey, I'm sorry. That forces me to say I'm sorry too. And in the future, if I know that it's my fault, I will not hesitate to utter the word which I really mean it. Mm -hmm. You know, keeping in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned before, <coughs> He admired the righteous people, whether men or women, saying, among their qualities, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And those who suppress their anger, those who pardon people, and Allah likes those who do best, the good doers. That applies to both. So... It doesn't mean that because 
she's at fault that I have to wait for her to say I'm sorry and she has to uh, kneel down and beg me for forgiveness. Uh, this is not the quality of an honorable man. And the opposite is true. Sometimes she knows that. It is his fault. But by just saying I'm sorry and trying to reconciliate and take it upon herself, that really uh, stops the wind, dissolves the ice, and makes things come back to normal. What if the, the problem is from both of them? What if they're both doing their thing? We did talk about the, the causes of um, uh, the problems, either from the wife, or from the husband, or from both. Mm -hmm. The term for having, uh, when the argument between the couple reaches to its uh, maximum extent, where there is a dead end, that's called shiqaq, shiqaq. which is a breach or a breakdown. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also treated that. He says, Azza wa Jalla, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا فَبَعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا إِنْ يُرِيدَا إِصْلَاحًا يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed. If you guys fear, that uh, a breach might happen in their marriage life. Then send hakam min ahli wa hakam min ahli, an arbitrator from her family, and another one from from his family. His family. <laughs> so we're having a representative from both parties. In yurida islaha. Here, the scholars of the linguistics would uh, make some more elaborations, whether the pronoun here, in yurida, is returning to the couple or to the arbitrators. In either case, if the couple are looking for peace and interested in reconciliation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call <coughs> reconciliation between them. And if the arbitrators find out that actually there is no problem and uh, it, it's fixable, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also make a cause of reconciliation between them. But uh, how much power does the, does, does the arbitrator have? That's does a very important question because it's related to fiqh and legislation. Because when we select the arbitrators, we select them on certain conditions and bases. We do not just select any person. As a matter of fact, uh, they can send an arbitrator from her family who can break more than fix. <laughs> very angry person and uh, he will be biased, will not even listen to the other party and right away will make a decision. Say, hey, she's our daughter and we want her back. Mm. Okay? The same case can happen with the, uh, an arbitrator from his uh, right. side, of, from his family. Yeah. So we have to understand that selecting, the process of selecting a hakam or an arbitrator from both families have to be based on that the arbitrator has to be wise, just, mm. religious, mature enough, has a history of being fair not biased, okay? So how much power and authority they have, this is very important. The Jumhur of the Muslim scholars, the vast majority of them, agreed to the fact that the arbitrators have the power either to reconciliate or to and join them apart. back, or to separate them, and that separation, that's a form of divorce where even if the man, if the husband disagrees, that's applicable. She's not his wife anymore. That is a statement of the vast majority of the ulama. Some scholars like Shafi'i or Hanafi said that they don't have the power of uh, you know, separating. They only have the power of arb uh, arbitrating and reconciliating. However, we have amongst uh, the, 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 the seerah and the history of Islam what shows that the, the arbitrators have this power of either reconciliating or when they find out that they have reached a dead end and the woman has been, uh, been treated unjustly, that to remove this unjust and uh, give her freedom. Uh, Imam <coughs> Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, happened to have a case where a couple came before him with their families, and each family presented an arbitrator. So Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, uh, asked the arbitrators first, do you know what's your role? Do you know what you're supposed to do? And he informed them with what they are supposed to do, <coughs> how much power they have. Then, as he explained to them 
the concept of reconciliation or separation? He asked the woman, do you agree to that? She said, رضيت بالله ورسوله حكما. I have accepted Allah and his messenger as a judge and their judgment as an effective judgment because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who suggested the arbitrators. As he came to address the husband, he said, أَمَّا التَّفْرِيقُ فَلَا I accept everything except giving them the right to separate us. So Imam Ali addressed him saying that, كَذَبْتْ You've lied. You either accept the fact that they have this power or not. So from this we understand that uh, the predecessors, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu understood that the arbitrators have this power. In addition to, I think, last time we discussed when Aqil, the son of Abu Talib, mm -hmm. uh, Ali's brother, may Allah be pleased with them, got married to Fatima, the daughter of Utba. And uh, Fatima was a very wealthy woman. She said, don't worry about anything. I'm going to take care of all the spending, but with one condition. What is it? Not to marry another woman as long as you're marrying me. And he accepted that. Okay. So whatever happened is every time he would come home, she would uh, pronounce how much she's missing Utba wa Shayba, who have died as kuffar. So one day uh, he came and she was saying the same. And he was very, very angry. So she said that, where is Utba and where is Shayba? They were great opponents of the Prophet ﷺ, her family members, a father and a brother. He said, well, when you enter the fire of hell, you will find them on your left-hand side. <laughs> so she was very angry with him, and she wore her clothes, she put them on, and she went to the Khalifa who was Uthman, Uthman ibn Affan. Uthman. So Uthman ibn Affan sent two hakams, two judges, two arbitrators. Abdullah ibn Abbas and Muawiyah. Abdullah ibn Abbas decided to separate them. When Muawiyah said no, he was looking for reconciliation. So when they figured out that the, the, the arbitrators would have this power to separate them, and they were in love. So they went home and they reconciliated their problem themselves. by themselves and they took care of it. So they didn't need the, the, the interference of the arbitrators. That shows us also, since Abdullah ibn Abbas had this power, he was an arbitrator to separate them if it is needed. That the, the, the hakam has this authority and this power. Mm -hmm. This is always so, the last result, right? The last, the last step yeah. is the arbitrator. So, Sheikh, uh, yani, ar arbitrators, they could be outsiders. It hasn't got to be from the family. Let me tell you this. In some cases, people who live in the West, people who don't have family members, uh, people come to us and say that we're having a problem. We are their families, mm -hmm. right? And we represent them fairly, whether the husband or the wife. By the way, in many cases that we have counseled some marriages where the couple have loved each other for years before they got married. And you see them coming to a breach and a breaking point to the point that they really dislike each other completely. Why? Because I believe that Islam is not functioning and religion is not at work at home. فَإِنْ كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَىٰ أَنْ تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا If you dislike them, it may be that you dislike something which Allah will bring a great deal of good in it. You never know. So one should keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. The last resolution should be divorce. 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 And you know, in the West we always say it's cheaper to keep her. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, basically yeah. because of the 50%. Yeah, because they take all your stuff. <laughs> There's something I still can't understand. You said that the arbitrators have the right to divorce them if they found out that this is the solution mm -hmm. to the problem. But how come and yeah, how divorce can, can take place without the husband saying it? What if he, what if he doesn't want to do Let it? me give you the, this uh, reference first of what we're talking about. An incident took place during the life of the Prophet ﷺ. A man by the name Thabit ibn Qais was married to a pretty woman. Okay? She came to the Prophet ﷺ. He gave her a garden as a dowry. She came to the Prophet ﷺ and she said, Ya Rasulullah, there is no way that I can be covered with the same cover with him. No way. I just dislike him. Uh, she didn't like the way he looks. Okay? She didn't like the way he looked. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, إني أكره الكفر في الإسلام. I'm afraid that I'm going to behave un-Islamically 
while I'm being a Muslim by not taking care of my husband and giving him his rights. His rights. And why is that? She actually said, Ya Rasulullah, I saw him coming amongst a group of people. He was the ugliest one of them. He was the shortest one of them. He was, and she could have said, Ya Rasulullah, I just don't like him. <laughs> he was the ugliest one of them. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, well, would you give him his garden back? She said, sure. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Thabit ibn Qais, divorce her. Give her her, uh, 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 take your garden back and let her go. There are certain cases where you will be very comfortable saying, man, just divorce her. That's best for both of you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it happened. Where you find out that the problems are frequently happening over and over and over for, for, for no reason. Because they just can't get along. Exactly. They can just get along anymore. So in this case, the arbitrators will find it's best for each one of them to find his way. Yeah. But, but it could come only just to appearance, Sheikh? To yeah, for example, uh, for example, I'm married to, to, to a woman, and uh, after she got pregnant, she got really fat. So because she got ugly, before she was pretty. But then, so I divorced her. It says who that means fat, that means ugly. No. Abdurrahman. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Uh. What about if you? No, I mean like. If, what about if, if you people turn, are like that? Is that is that? Let me tell you available? this. Yeah, Remember, I mean. guys, what I said in the beginning that if the couple choose each other based on the religious commitment, if that is remained, that is the quality which I'm looking for. It's that time you to get pray. older, you get fatter. Mm. That's irrelevant. That's mm. part of life too to get old and fat. It's time to pray. <laughs> yeah, it's it's time, time to pray. Yeah. So uh, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Get our wudu on and then go make some salat, inshallah. Yeah. Exactly. Look at the by. Salam alaikum.